let's look at some basic arithmetic. So I'm going to create an integer. Well, I'll create a bunch of them. So A, B, C, D. And then I'm going to print out the value of D. So I'll just go ahead and say D. And D is going to be printed out here as D. All right. So now I'm going to set the value so we can get an idea of how it works. So um, let's do A equals 2, B equals 3, and C equals 4, and D equals 5. So at this point, I can just print it out and yeah, run it. should just print out the number 5. So D5. You can see that right there. It's good. All right, now there are four basic arithmetic operators. There's the add, subtract, multiply, and divide. And then there's a fifth one, which is modular division or modulus, which we'll talk about in a moment. So let's look at these first four. If I decide I want to assign D a value, I can either assign a value directly or I can use other variables, such as A plus B. If I do A plus B, then it'll be 2 plus 3, which will be 5. So I'll go ahead and run that, and you can see that it prints out 5. I could also do A plus C, or B plus C. And I can do multiple ones on the same line, and run that, and you can see this time, it's 9 because 2 plus 3 plus 4 is 9. All right. We can also do subtraction. Now, if I do A plus B minus C, then it's going to be 2 plus 3 minus 4, which will give you 1. So I go ahead and run that. And you can see that it gives me back 1 as the value. When it does this, it does follow the orders of precedence, and so addition and subtraction have the same level. So they apply from left to right. If I were to put in a multiplication symbol, so times, then you have to say, well, okay, if multiplication is a different precedence, then would B times C be done first? as they are in standard algebra, or would be A plus B, then times C. Well, it follows normal precedence, just algebra precedence, so it should be B times C, which would be 3 times 4 is 12, then A gets added on to that, so it should be 2 plus 12. So 2 plus 12 is 14, we'll go ahead and run that, and it gives us 14 exactly as we expected. All right, now let's go ahead and do multiply. A times B times C, run that. And you can see that two times three times four is 24. You can then do a division thing. Okay, so two times three is six. And divide by four, what does that give us? Well, the answer should be, well, one and a half, right? So I'll go ahead and run this. And instead of getting one and a half, you get one. And the reason for that is because you are doing what we call integer division. Integer division is interesting because what it does is it throws away the remainder and it's not there because you can't store decimal numbers in an integer. If I were to do A divided by B, you see A is 2, divided by B is 3, so that would get us a very small number, 2 thirds. So if I run 2 thirds, it reports 0, because 2 thirds is, well, less than 1, and so it throws away the remainder, and then you're left with just 0. All right, if we wanted to actually keep that, 
we can keep it, but it becomes a lot more tricky because you have to switch types. So let's go ahead and switch this to from an int to a float or to a double. All right, now these are all doubles. If I do this same exact calculation, A divided by B, and run it, this time, because it's a double, it stores values in decimal. So uh, instead of being two-thirds, it does 0 0.66667, and then you have that number there. If I were to go back to my original one, A times B divided by C, then it would actually give me the 1.5. So it would be 6 divided by 4, which gives me 1.5. All right, so you can see that you have integers and doubles, which are both being used or they can be used. All right, now if you wanted to switch this back to integers, I'm going to show you another thing you can do. So, let's go ahead and run this. So it should be 24. So, 2 times 3 times 4 is 24. But what if I want to do 2 times 3, and then there's this other symbol, modulus. Well, 2 times 3 is 6. Modulus 4 is, well, let's just figure out what it does, first of all. It gives me 2. So you start saying, well, what does that mean? Well, what it's doing is it's saying 2 times 3 is 6. And then if I divide by 4, it would give me 1, but the remainder is 2. And so the number here is 2. So let's go ahead and change this a bit. So let's say I have a number like 100, and I want to divide it by 25 and get the remainder. Well, the remainder should be zero. So go ahead and run that, and you can see the remainder shows up as zero. But if I were to change this to something like 11, well, we know 99 is a multiple of 11, so we'd expect it to be one. So go ahead and run that, and we see the remainder is one. If you were to take smaller numbers like 17 and modular modular division use 3, well, we'd expect it to be 2 because 15 is a multiple 3, and so we'd get 2. So we're going to run that. Gives you an idea of how modular division works, which is kind of important because we use that a lot in order to figure out things if, if numbers are even or odd or other kinds of things like that. All right. So that gives you an idea of the basic arithmetic. So you got addition, subtraction, um, addition, and multiplication, and modular division. Something else to keep in mind is when you are using integers, because they cannot store floating point numbers or decimal numbers, if I were to do something like 2.5 and 3.5 and 4.5, it ignores the rest. So do A plus B plus... It ignores everything after the dot because it truncates this down to two, this one down to three, and this one down to four. So go ahead and run this. And it does nine. So two plus three plus four is nine. If I were to change them to floating points with a double, then it would keep track of these. And so it would be instead of nine, it would be ten and a half. So you can see 10.5 right there. So you can see it's keeping all these things in here. So this is how you do basic arithmetic with integers and floating point numbers.